Hey all you sub freaks and welcome back. So today we're in a sub 95 from 2008 and we're gonna calibrate the turbo. So the owners of this car just bought it last week and the previous owner upgraded the turbo from a GT17 to a Mitsubishi TD04 but didn't change the calibration. So we're gonna change the calibration using our combi adapter and computer and uh, get it all right with T7 suit. So we're gonna do some more ECU flashing today. But I know that you all guys love ECU flashing, so let's go. And luckily for us, we have a 2008 Saab 95. So even though it's unmodified, we still have the PBUS adapter outlet down in the diagnostic port, which means we can plug it in right away. We actually have a camera person filming us today, so that's nice. I can have both hands. It's never happened before. So again, the combi adapter. Which is extremely useful. So plan A today is to is to pull the software from the car and then modify it and put it back in. But it's a possibility that we don't have a uh, have the symbol tables for the software. So we might need to use a completely different software. Have the key? So the camera operator stole the key from me. <laughs> so we're gonna do this quickly. Uh, turn it on. Wait a few seconds, turn it off, and then we have Trionic CAN flasher as always, set to use the combi adapter. I'm gonna read the file, just wanna see the LEDs here, there we go. And I will save the file and call it the stock bin. Now we'll see if we can get connection. Start and download. It works! Amazing! The 9.5 from 2008 actually has the PBUS adapter. You know my video about the connecting PBUS to the outlet. This is all done. So it's already starting to flash the new software. So this is a quite nicely equipped 9.5 uh, 2008. So it has a few options like the electrical mirrors. You can click and they will fold in. Has uh, Actually looks almost like my wife's 2006 with the same fusion blue paint. So I like that paint very much. Some things to fix, like this uh, windshield, which has been cracked. So the nice thing about the 2.3 liter bio power, it has got all the options almost from the aero, with, with regards to the engine, except for the turbo. So it has the aero brakes, the aero clutch, and now with the TDO4 turbo, it's almost identical to the aero. So we're actually going to put in, if if the stock bin doesn't work, I'm actually going to put in the aero binder to the car, same as my red aero over there. So 250 horsepower is, is very much possible with this configuration. We're almost done downloading and now comes the moment of truth where I will open the bin and see if we can see the symbol table for it. Total duration 1 minute and 38 seconds. That's pretty fast. Okay, so now we open it in T7 suit. Okay, so there's an experimental symbol list. We just have to try to import. So now when we're changing the boost calibration, we're going to use a tuning package and we can get this tuning pack from trianoctuning.com. There's a form there you can go in and download this file. So B23515T. Okay, so now we see reds here. That means that the import failed. So we can't use this stock banner since we don't have the symbol list. Okay, that's it. Uh, we have to skip this bin and instead use the binary from my arrow. Then we have to modify the VIN number and anti-theft codes. But that's all easily done. Okay, so we're now going to copy the files or the codes from the stock binary of this car to the 55P binary from my arrow. And then I think every, everything should work because that car is converted to use ethanol as well. So paste and then we copy from the stock binary also the chassis number or VIN number and paste. Open CID info, we enable the second lambda sound. Okay, so T7 suit is done. Now we have the binary file we want to upload to the car. And always when flashing, we need to be careful. We should ideally have a battery charger to the car. But since we don't, we'll just have to wing it and see what happens. I have got a spare ECU with me in the trunk. So if the flashing would go wrong or if the car battery would die, uh, we can change the ECU and flash in new software. So turning the key on again, Turn to lock, then we wait 15 to 20 seconds. In the meantime, I'll open up the file. So five more seconds, and then we click on open. 
and then we cross our fingers. Everyone, cross your fingers. And here we go. There it starts. Okay, so it usually takes about a minute, slightly less than a minute. Fingers crossed. So when this is done, if this all works out, I will turn off the car and I will open up the fuse box again and pull fuse number 17. You've all seen this in previous videos, nothing new. My laptop is at 70% battery, which is plenty of power. Almost done. And there we go, 50 seconds. That is awesome. Connection closed. So I'm pulling the key. And now we just have to hope it worked. When I pull the fuse, there's no going back. Cover open. You can hear a small click from the dashboard. I'm gonna wait a few seconds here and turn it back on. So now the ECU has been rebooted and we're gonna put the car to on, put it in neutral, pull the handbrake and see if it starts. Ta-da! Okay, we can turn on the laptop and hopefully open SID will be running now, so I'll be clicking this. Nope. Okay, so we don't have open SID. Uh, that's probably because we have a new type of buttons here. But that's alright. So now we do a test drive. Okay, I had to turn, turn the microphone off, so hopefully you can still hear me, though it's raining. I just enabled the uh, uh, little ELM327, the Bluetooth uh, OBD2 reader. I'm gonna use that to check the data. So now we have OBD2 adapter connected to the car. Hopefully we can see, yeah. So short term fuel trim and long term fuel trim. I will keep a, a little eye on this just to make sure it doesn't go away too far from zero. So we'll just take a short test drive, and see what happens, I'm going out to probably 100 kilometers an hour just to make sure that it works under high boost. This is my first time driving this car. It feels good. I mean, the 9.5s are always nice to drive. Hopefully you all enjoy the new camera angles. There's nothing I can do on my own, but now that I have someone helping me, That's good, that's good. Okay, so the car feels good on the light loads. <clears throat> but I have a suspicion that there's a vacuum leak somewhere. Uh, we have a turbo gauge, but the turbo gauge doesn't go further than halfway up. It should reach into the reds. It might just be a vacuum hose that's popped off or something. I won't have time to look into it today, but uh, probably an easy fix later on. I don't really feel that same turbo kick as we did before with, with my car, even though it's the same engine and same powertrain. So what I'm going to do is very carefully check the OBD2 adapter again. Now we can see the boost goes up to 04. Yeah. The boost doesn't go up further than point, point 0.4. It should go to, to 1.0 or something like this, one bar of boost pressure. And since it doesn't, I mean, it could be the software. I don't think so, though, because it feels good and it's the same hardware as my car. Probably it's just a vacuum leak. If you have the same problem in your car, I would just check out my video on, on replacing the vacuum lines with blue silicon hoses, which makes uh, all these little problems go away. So we're gonna make a U-turn at the next possible place and then we're gonna go, go back. At least the car runs, feels good, doesn't give the big boost pressure we want though. Then we can enjoy the beautiful sights of uh, Östergötland here in Sweden. It's a very flat part of the country with lots of agriculture. So I'm just quickly checking here the vacuum hoses to see if there's anything obvious. Yeah, I can't say I'm seeing anything obvious. So all the black hoses here seem to be in good order. Okay, that's it. That's a working car. So, thanks again for watching. We're gonna have more sub videos upcoming soon. So stay tuned and see you in the next video. Bye bye.